You're listening to the B2B Growth Think Tank, the show that brings you the virtual hot seat where each week my expert guests and I help another business leader by masterminding actionable solutions to a specific challenge they're currently trying to solve in their business. So if you're looking for answers to a specific challenge that you're facing, that if you could solve in the next 90 days would have a huge impact on your growth, send it in to thinktank at thinklikeafish.co.uk and we'll see if we can feature you on the show. My name is Adam King, your host and the captain of the ship of growth consultancy Think Like a Fish. And if you're ready to rethink what's possible for your business and discover the growth strategies, advice and insight to turn this new vision into a reality, let's get started. Hey, Adam here. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to quickly let you know about my Growth Accelerator implementation program. Now, this is ideal for owners or directors of established B2B or professional service firms who want to generate more revenue in less time while lowering marketing costs. And it's especially ideal for those who are sick and tired of the hype and false promises who instead like the idea of working with a partner that puts skin in the game with you and guarantees results. Now, if that is you, then the Growth Accelerator implementation program could be the perfect solution to setting you on the path to sustainable growth. Because when you partner with me for 90 days, I'll help you implement a simple and scalable business development system that is guaranteed to generate at least 500,000 of new revenue for your business in the next 12 months. And if you like the sound of this, make sure you visit thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash accelerator and watch the short video that explains how it all works. But before you go and do that, let's get to today's episode. Hello, welcome to the B2B Growth Think Tank. This is the virtual hot seat section of my interview with Dan Netting, and it's where we brainstorm and mastermind some solutions to a question that has come in from a listener. So if you would like to have a challenge or a question answered on the show, then make sure that you send that in to thinktank at thinklikeafish.co.uk. So let's dive into today's virtual hot seat. What we're going to do for those that is the first time of listening to the, uh, the, the B2B Growth Think Tank, um, Dan and I are going to basically have a bit of a brainstorming session to help this person with a challenge that they are facing. So the challenge that this person has sent in, and uh, it's anonymous this time because not everyone leaves their name, but it is, I know how valuable it is to get myself out there and build my influence with content on things, especially like video, but I'm so uncomfortable doing this. What's the most impactful way of doing this and getting myself out there so I don't actually hurt my brand by being so bad? So, I mean, the first thing before I ask on you, I hear from this person, right, is don't be so hard on yourself. First of all, I guarantee you're not as bad as you think. Um, I certainly had the same thing and, and all the rest of it. And I look back and think of some of the early stuff. I, it was terrible, but you get better. But why don't you give us a, you know, what, what do you think about this? What do you hear in that question? Firstly, I'm so, so passionate about this stuff. And I can see myself doing something around this in the future because it was crippling for me. Like I would be so much farther along the path if this wasn't a problem for me because it was such a problem for such a long time. But um, the core advice is not the advice that anyone wants, is that you just have to do it. However, but yeah, this, this listening to that, it sounds very, it sounds like the bar is very high for what they expect of themselves, for their first attempts. And a mantra that I picked up, this was actually this year when I, sorry, last year, we're in 2021 now, um, when uh, I started doing lives, which was something else I really, really struggled to start doing, was it's supposed to be bad. And it was just the idea that you're not going to be great out the gate. So I think there's two parts. First is, for me, ditch that perfectionism and just accept it's going to be bad. And second, that because because you're worried in terms of like it being bad affecting, they're just not. It's just not going to make a difference. Something I like to do actually was to look back. Like even if you don't want to jump straight in and post a video, start doing recordings of yourself and just watch yourself back because how you perceive yourself in your head when you're in the middle of it. Like, for example, you might fumble a word and you think you look absolutely ridiculous and the world is crumbling down. You watch it back and it's like the tiniest little blip and it just, it just, it's just nothing. So that's just, just a little tip from my side. Um, it's it's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, 
it's interesting because actually um obviously no one will know this but when we first connected it was an, an event and we kind of had a discussion around this very topic and the re one of the, the the big reasons why I wanted to bring you on. And then I saw this, I was like, this is like some kind of like universe putting this sort of thing together because you were kind of struggling with it. And I was explaining that I was also, I was in the process of getting over it. And I had documented my, my journey around using video and putting myself out there and all the rest of it. Um, back when this was the client catching podcast and I didn't even have a picture of myself on my website for such a long time because I, I, I'd always been behind the curtain and it was crippling. But you realize that actually one of the most important things you can do to get over this is what we ended up doing. And it's going and meeting other people and having conversations and getting inspiration and seeing what other people are doing, but not yes. looking at the guys that are literally, as you perceive on top that have got years and years and years of experience. They've got teams behind them doing this kind of thing. And you've got, you're looking at that and going, I can't possibly do that. That's terrible. You know, I'll, I'll be, you know, who am I to do it? It's not, it's not about the presentation. It's about the information. It's about the value. And it's about, as you've covered here, the transformation. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's really tough because I, I know what it's like sitting there. You want that injection of confidence to just go and do it. And, but that comes after the fact yeah. that you've just got to push through that horrible feeling that you're, you're probably going to have, like, let's, let's be real uh, of doing it and looking at yourself and thinking, Oh, this is actually quite cringy. I look terrible and all the rest of it, but it's only by doing that consistently again and again and again, that you'll get to the point that you're probably the, the standard you're looking at or holding for yourself really well, in my experience, really do get people that come out the gate like that. Mm. And, <laughs> it's and it's all just about doing it. And I think it's very much a mindset thing. It really is. And, and that's kind of why I asked the question at the beginning around has riding motorbikes prepared you for business and all the rest of it. And I, I talk about the snowboarding side of things because you would think logically it would make sense that if you can go and ride a motorbike and crash at 108 miles an hour, you can get on a camera and talk. It is a totally different thing. And yeah. that's not to beat yourself up about it. First of all, like it's natural. Everyone feels a bit nervous because we feel like we are being judged. There's a psychological principle that's in there of, you know, if we're judged and seem to be unhelpful to the tribe, we kicked out, we starve, we die, that kind of thing. It is a real thing. The only thing that really you can do to get past it is exposure. There's a whole thing around exposure therapy and all the rest of it, but it is so much easier said than done. It yes. really is. So I don't know about how, how you feel about this as a, well, first of all, how did you get over it and how did you just get, shit done i think for me it got to the point of realizing that the, the impact it was going to have if i didn't do it mm. so it was like putting it off putting it off putting it off thinking i can still be successful i can still or, or do what i want to do so uh, as a quick example as a quick uh, bit of context i knew that i needed to be on youtube for my motorcycle business like it just made so much sense to go and show people how to do it rather than just writing articles which is all i was doing before but I put it off, put it off, put it off, like thinking I can still get to where I want to. I can still have the impact and all the rest of it. And then I realized I just like, I've just got to do it. If I want to take, to go to this next level, I have to do it. So for me, it was purely the pain of, the pain of not doing it become greater of the pain of doing it. If that makes sense. Mm. Do you, did you think then that you can be too comfortable to need to push yourself to do this? I guess it just comes down to considering what you want. Mm. Like, are you just doing it because someone said, or do you think it's going to be really beneficial to you? And that's crucial because I guess really the, fir the, the first question would be to ask this person is why are you doing it? Like, yeah. is it because somebody has told you this is the thing to do, or is it because you have identified it strategically as something that you know is going to help your business? And also you need to go a little bit deeper than that as well, because all right, it may well help, but is it the thing that you need to do right away? Because just because you're seeing everyone out there on social media and, you know, shouting about themselves and taking selfies with, you know, all, you know, blah, 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 not, not selfies quite so much anymore, but you know, do you need to do that? Does that fit your personal brand? It didn't mine. It certainly doesn't mine. That's a big reason why starting the podcast this is a big reason for it. So you don't have to go out and do millions of videos. You don't have to do it, but it's all about that consistency of content. 
if that is something that is going to support the strategic pieces that you've put in place in your business to achieve a goal. But if, if this doesn't actually work for you, why are you going to put yourself through the, the, the pain of, of going through it? It may well be yeah. something you need to do in the future. I'm not saying that that isn't the case, but is there something that you can do to achieve the outcomes that you're setting for yourself that doesn't require you to do something that you really don't want to do by the sound of it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a dangerous thought. I totally agree with what you're saying. The, the danger is that people will use that as the excuse to not do it. So yeah, like you say, it's about really considering, is this something I want to do for my business for personal reasons? Because I know for me, I take a lot of pride in just the fact that I broke through those barriers. Mm. Like to, to your point about does like getting over the risks of riding affect the business? I would say that getting over these barriers and one I got over this year was to talk on stage, which is kind of moving up the same chain, if you like. Doing that makes me think I can do anything. So it's, you might be thinking on a personal level, yes, this is something I really want to do. But yeah, generally, it's I would say really consider if this is something you want to mm. do, like uh, that is something you have to pursue. Mm. And 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 I guess from a from a practical standpoint of okay, what would be some of the first the first steps to doing this? What would you say to someone? What do you what would be the the, the first things that you would do? Um, so yes. I don't know if I'm the best one to ask it because I kind of jumped in the deep end, but, um, well, maybe that's the best thing to do. Literally rip off the band. It could very well be. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly like ripping the, the bandaid off kind of thing. But, um, again, I, I found comfort in watching myself back this was after I posted the video, I should say, but it was, it was consistently watching myself back. Um, realizing that actually I look normal. I'm not some, you know, freak. I don't look stupid, whatever it is. I'm just talking about my subject matter and that's it but you can do that without posting a video. So I think it's about chipping or starting to chip away at that perception you have of yourself or how you think you're going to be, you know, how you think you're going to show up on camera mm. and just do things to chip away at that. And again, it's to show yourself the actual evidence of how you look, not how mm. you think you look. Yeah. And, and, and maybe the deep end thing is, is the right way to, cause, cause I took a similar approach when I was trying to get over this and I, I literally set myself a challenge and I said, I was going to do a video every day for 30 days. And by the way, you just do these videos. You don't even ever have to make any of them public. Although that kind of accountability will help you and just do it. Um, it can help, I guess, to kind of have a, a, have an idea of the type of things that you want to talk about, but don't put yourself under pressure to, to make it, you know, the most amazing um, piece of content in the world, as long as you cover something that can actually help someone and, and it is relevant to your audience, you know your audience, you know the kind of things, because let's be honest, most people do this all the time, every day on phone calls, on Zoom calls, especially nowadays, when you're having sales conversations, when you're working with clients, you do this all the time and there's no real difference between that and you know, you're just having a conversation with someone, it's just that the other someone is a, is a camera. Yeah. And I would say as well, just thinking back to the, the words used in that question of, of wanting to have an impact and not wanting to be perceived as, as bad and having a negative effect on like your business. When you start doing this, I would say detach from all of those things because the goal here is to get you to do it, not the result you're going to get from it. Mm. So I would just think of it purely as like the, the task is literally get on camera and get stuff out there and just detach for what that video means for you past that point, because yeah. that's the goal is having it out there. That's all. And I guess if you're still struggling with this and it's, it's something that I've suggested to a few people and it's really, really helped if you're really, really, cause, cause, and this only comes from the experience of doing this podcast, for example, I realized that I talk to people all the time, every day, I ask them questions and they just come out with beautiful, wonderful content. So why not do that for yourself? Get on a zoom call, with somebody else and have them ask you questions because we're so much more comfortable now with being on something like a zoom call or something like that. We almost forget that we are on camera. So why not take advantage of that and actually just get somebody to interview you on something that you know, that your ideal clients want and all the rest of it, you will find that that actually weirdly you forget, like we're just having a chat here. Like there's not a camera. I forget that, you know, it's, it's just, we're having a conversation. 
And maybe that can help take some of the pressure off. And actually, it can be a real hack to get a lot of stuff in one take, because if you set aside half an hour, an hour, get through a few questions, boom, you've got your, you've got your content. That's a really good point, actually, because something, and this is why I struggled with going live so much, because I was scared of going off piste and just being myself. And so I got to the point where I was trying to be so structured with what I was saying and when that it just made the job so much harder. So to, to your point about getting on, on camera and just speaking to people, that's how you can get, that's a really good way of just getting your stuff out and just letting it flow. It's because that comes from the perfectionism too. So just, this is me making an assumption, but based on that question, I feel like you're probably going to try and over prepare for the video too, but that probably won't help you. Like my early YouTube videos, it was like word for word script stuff because I just didn't want to be myself or just, you know, mess up or whatever it was, but it just makes the job harder. So like, yeah, really good point. What you said there about just speaking to people that, that in itself can be good training just to, to get out and talk about your thing. And when you over-prepare, it just takes so much longer. And then people say, oh, well, it takes too long to create all this content. I've got a day, you know, I've got a day job and I've got clients to serve and all the rest of it. Well, yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen this work incredibly well for people because all they do is have these conversations. They edit out the person that's asking them the question and they have a little bit of a, um, a, an intro that they are able to lay over things. And it, it works in terms of a, a quick video. So you can then transcribe it. You can do all sorts of things with it, but that would be my number one tip to get started. I know that there's been others on the podcast that have suggested other things like um, Ian Anderson Gray, for example, said, get a group of you together in a, in a Facebook live group that are kind of in the same situation and go live to each other because you can get practice in going live and all the rest of it in an environment that actually you're all expecting each other to stuff up and you're going to support each other and all that kind of thing. So I think there's another sort of practical tip, but I would just say to this person, don't be hard on yourself. The fact that you're even asking this question and as you picked up, you're talking about wanting to make impact and actually help and serve people that will come across more than anything because you actually want to serve, you actually want to help people. And that's genuine and it's authentic. And people will forgive the odd uh, slip up and all the rest of it. And God knows I make enough of them, but I know I'd no, no longer make them something that I, I get too upset about because no. it is, you know, it is the way that you are. There's the case as well that those, those mishaps and like laughing about them and stuff, it makes you human. So more relatable rather than turning up like a robot that they, people don't want that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can always make all sorts of mistakes when it comes to this sort of thing, like forgetting to hit record at the beginning of an interview. <laughs> so, you know, it happens. There's all sorts of things that goes on. So I, I really do hope I, you've got, there's some absolutely amazing, um, insights just talking about your experience. And that's why I love doing these things because I hope the person, um, first of all, listens to this and then actually goes and, and, and tries some of these things and really, you know, it's about doing it, getting into the habit of it, make it easy for yourself by doing some form of maybe interview kind of thing, but then just do it. And, and it's really hard to say that because that's the answer. That is the answer. Yeah. Unless you work out, you don't actually need to because it doesn't actually fit where you're trying to go. So that's it for this episode. I hope you found it valuable. I hope you got some great ideas that you can take away and apply to your business to help you grow. If you did, please share it with somebody else that might also find this valuable because they will thank you for it. Also, to let you know that I have a podcast gift page where I put a lot of resources that I love to share with my listeners. You can find the links to join the Facebook community there and you can get my Book, the conversational relationship marketing and the audiobook version all for free plus a number of other resources I'll be adding over time on that page so make sure you head there to thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash podcast gift and you can help yourself to the things that make most sense to you and if you have enjoyed the show please make sure you're subscribed you'll get updated as the new episodes come out and finally last favor please consider giving the show your honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one. They mean the world for me. I love hearing from my listeners and it does help others find the show as well. So if you want to go and do that, I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, have an awesome day and we'll speak soon.